Hi, I'm David, and welcome to Leisure Bit. And today we're going to be fitting a lithium battery in the Eldis CV20 camper van. We'll also be making a little distribution box just to make it a little bit easier if we need to switch the power off using some breakers. So let's get cracking. <laughs> So the battery I've used is a 460 amp hour one um, that I thought was the best value uh, for me and just want a little bit of reserve capacity above and beyond what I'd expect to use. That doesn't mean of course you need to get one so big if you're fancying doing lithium. It depends on what you want to use it for and how long you want to go off grid and what kind of uh, usage you make of the battery. So. Just because it was right for me doesn't mean it was right for you to go to that size. So let's just take a quick look at the battery that I'm going to be fitting today. So I've gone for a 460 amp hour battery. Uh, the reason for going for that particular battery was it's got the reserve capacity, should we say, that I believed would be useful and it came at a price point that made sense uh, when comparing between different capacities of battery and the actual size of the battery. Uh, as it happens, um, I was expecting to need to fit it kind of long ways on uh, this way, but it's actually managed to go in that way. So I'm actually losing very little space compared to the original battery within the van, which is great. Um, so it still leaves some space for storage, uh, which I think I'm going to get a little box and just pop in this section here, um, just for putting bits and pieces in, just to keep it nice and neat. The battery's a 460 amp hour. Um, it's charging from, if you watched a previous video, the Victron uh, mains charger uh, that feeds along. There's a connection to it from that. There's also a connection to it from the solar controller, uh, which feeds down from above. And I've got a smart shunt as well, just to keep an eye on the um, power. Um, as you probably gathered and you better see in the video there, I'm also fitting an inverter, which we'll cover off in probably the next video, um, just in terms of how, how it all um, works. And then we'll do a subsequent video on bringing it all together. So how it all, all connects together and just, just kind of summarize up all of the different videos if it's something you were looking at doing, uh, just to explain how it all connects together. And also um, we'll then do a the so what video. So why, what have we gained from it? How much power do things use? How much capacity do you really need? So we'll cover that off um, as part of that. So next I'm just gonna go and grab the battery and the inverter so and just work out for positioning. So I'm looking to fit the battery here. It fits just behind, uh, it just fits in there nicely. Just give you a bit of a look around there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the padding material I used for the back door. I'll show you a bit of it. Some of this self-adhesive backed insulating material just to kind of pad the back and the sides just so it fits in snugly at the back. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fasten it so it's not going to move around. And I'm going to build a shelf over it and box it in and just take it along to this line here and what I'll do then is I'm going to build a shelf and the inverter will be installed on top of the shelf so I'm going to get on with that now so I wanted to show you how I've fitted the battery apologies I didn't get that much footage of the kind of messing around trying to get it in place because I don't think that would have been uh, particularly helpful. So let's cover off what we've done. So I was expecting the battery to have to go in long ways on, but actually it managed to fit um, kind of back over. It's fairly tight just for, for reference there. And what I've actually done is I, I've used some of this um, high temperature padding just to make sure nothing moves around. And I put it along the back as well, so it's kind of cushioned as I uh, push the battery in. So let's just take a look around um, what I've done. So the first thing is, 
Um, along the front, I just put a little bit of the padding. It's the same stuff I used for the back door. Just to make sure the battery is secured in place and isn't going to move anywhere. But just give it a very slight bit so that we've not got pressure on the case there. Just that it can find its own position. So just kind of screwed it in um, tightly and just screwed that down to the floor there. At this side, I've done exactly the same. But I've put a little bit of a... Um, raised up piece here that I just made out of wood with a bit of ply just to cover it in and then again just used a bit of padding because the top of the battery comes out there but I don't obviously want to damage the battery but it just helps keep it um, secure and I've done the same at the other side and we'll have a look at that in a minute and uh, kind of take this off because this is what I'm using as the kind of battery distribution point so we'll just go through what we've got on there before we go any further so let's just do a little run through what we've got. So what we've got here is we've got a 15 amp breaker for the, which feeds up to the solar. And we'll have a look at the back of that in a minute. Um, I'll show you how I've uh, done that. Uh, but basically I've just boxed it in here, just giving enough room so that we could get the cables in relatively tightly so we don't lose too much space. Because we've lost, what? We, we, we've we kind of lost a little bit of space from the original but it came to about here um so it was about where that where the breaker was roughly where the box came to so we've lost a couple of inches uh but nothing major we've still got this um space to work in i think i'm gonna put a little storage box in here um just to make it easier so this feeds in from the solar controller and we've got a 15 amp breaker there we've got this feed which is the main feed coming in and that comes from the battery there and what I've done is I've put a 50 amp breaker there and in the finishing off video with the inverter we're going to actually fix that when we when we box it in but just to show you how it's connected up that feeds through there to the bus bar uh, which we'll just take a look at in a minute and then it distributes out to the various breakers and I also put a little fuse box on as well so why did I use breakers and fuse box? Um, there's some things like the alarm and um, the feed to drive this um, little smart shunt um, that actually only need very small um, fuses. And unless there's something goes wrong, like the cable comes out and it touches somewhere, we shouldn't actually have a problem with that. So I've just used fuses for, for anything like that rather than using breakers because we shouldn't actually need to switch them out or if we do um, we can just pull pull the pull the fuse out as as needed and I'll just store a few spare fuses in little box behind there uh, just in case we ever do have a problem from the negative side of the battery we've got this connection here um I've got this I'll put links to these below but this is a um 50 millimeter square um negative connection that goes into the smart shunt and then from the smart shunt we take the feed out which comes to this distribution box here which is a bus bar um you can pick i'll put links again where to uh, where to pick those up from and then all of the negative terminals connect into that uh, bus bar there just to keep it neat and i've just screwed that down to the floor um, we'll lift the top off and have a look at that in a tick so there we go there's the uh, bus bar and you can see the various negative connections including uh, the ones that feed off to the inverter which we cover in another episode and then that just sits on top of here you can take the spaces out so you can feed the wires through and then that just goes on the top of there and then just screws in let's pop that back on now so there we go we've got that back together and then all of our negatives feed in there. So that kind of replaces the, what would be the negative terminal on the battery where the connections would have connected up before. We're just connecting them all through there for neatness. And that just uh, fits securely there with the top back bobbed back on. So as we said, there's the solar uh, which feeds in. If we ever need to cut the power from it, we can just click that. It knocks the power off, click it back in. Um, to put it back on, let me show you that again. So we can just press the breaker there to open it and close it, like so. So let's have a look at the other breakers now. So we've got here, as I mentioned, we've got the fuse for the alarm and for the shunt. 
and then we've got a fuse uh, uh, sorry a breaker for the mains charger and that wire basically feeds along back to the mains charger which we saw in the previous video on fitting the kind of charger power supply and it, we can turn that off by just pressing that and that opens it and click it up to put it back on we've got dc power sockets here now that's something i'll be fitting and that'll be in a future video it's basically just usb and USB C sockets and 12 volt sockets so i'll put that on a separate breaker and then cv uh, distribution power feed is basically the feed back into the main um kind of eldest supplied control panel that uh, would have fed from the battery and that's got a 30 amp breaker on there so we've got a 40 from the mains charger a 30 for the dc socket and a 30 for the feed back into the main power for the cv and then we've got fuses at the bottom here now i've put some tape on i'll probably look at a way of neatening that up a little bit more just to make sure nothing touches anywhere that's got a connection i haven't on that one yet because uh, we've got it knocked off uh, but we feed the power in through here and it comes out through there uh, and that comes off the bus bar I'll just give you a shot at in a tick so here you can see the back of uh, that control unit so i've fitted that uh, bus bar i could only get a black one so i just put some red vinyl on and um just marked it up to make it clear it's a positive feed but you can see there i've just run wires to feed to the breakers and the main positive connects to that and then also the output to the fuse box so let's do a quick recap so first of all we take the positive from the lithium battery and we feed it through this breaker for safety and we can cut the power off then to that distribution block that one i've got a 50 amp but you could use a different size depending on your requirements that then feeds through to here and behind the box here we've got the bus bar and then from the bus bar we take a feed to here 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 the fuse box there and also to the solar input feed there the outputs of them then connect to the respective circuits such as the solar controller out the bottom the power supply which we replaced in the last video this one's for a future video it's basically usb sockets and uh, 12 volt sockets that i'm going to put in and then this one connects to the Aldis um, control box and distribution box uh, just further up the van there. Um, the fuse box then connects one to the alarm and one to um, this smart shunt. And then from a negative, this comes out here into the smart shunt, out of the smart shunt, tucked behind the box there into this um, bus bar distribution distributing the negative that we had a look at that then feeds to all the negative feeds to the circuits we talked about there and it just keeps it nice and neat from the battery um, you probably spot you've got these wires going off here which are actually for the inverter which we'll cover in a future vlog and also the plug at the back um, feeds onto the supply for the inverter as well um, this is just a little box i made up here and we'll have a look at the back of that and then i've just screwed it on and done the same as that side where we've got somewhere to essentially screw a top onto next uh, which i'm going to put on now and then i'll just show you how that all goes together um so just a reminder we're using these with a bit of padding just hold the battery nice and firmly in place but not kind of squeeze it up and crack the case or anything like that we're then um just built the sides up so we can build a top on it some padding at the back um just to make sure it, it, it sits nice and firm and uh, cushioned there and then we've left some space just to make sure we get a bit of air circulation about it just in case the battery warms up and so we've not kind of compressed it in too much so that's how i've um fitted that um i will be fitting um just for those of you um just thinking around you know what happens if you roll the van over or something like that the plan is not to do that but in the event of that i'm just going to actually fit something at the back here that attaches to this metal work just to make sure that the van isn't going to come loose 
in the unlikely event um, that uh, you, you know the van turned over or something like that because you don't want 35 kilograms of lithium battery wanging around in the back on top of everything else going on and um, when I connect the inverter as well I'm just going to connect two more breakers to there but that then just keeps nice and simple where we've, we've got very limited connections coming off the battery and also allows us to disconnect the current at any point if we need to. So I've made this top that fits over the top of the battery there and I've just put a little bit of padding there just again so that the we're not compressing the battery but it, it just keeps everything nice and solid so I'm just going to screw that on now. So I've lined that up there you'll notice there's a couple of fittings there with just some short screws in that's where the inverter the back of the inverter fits to because I'm actually putting the inverter over the top here so that's how we've got that set up there. I'm just going to put the screws in now. There we go we've got a nice solid top there that just keeps everything nicely in place. I just bob the inverter back on and you can see then with that on the top and we'll cover the inverter off in a separate vlog. So there we go we just put the inverter back on you can see that's nice and solid and it just has some anti-vibration bushes there. We've plugged the socket back in so there we go all back together. So thank you for watching I hope you found this useful and I'd recommend watching the uh, if you're not interested in inverter you can skip the next one but I'd recommend watching the last two videos because that's when we bring the story together and kind of cover off how it all hangs together. So I hope you found that useful, um, really appreciate any feedback in the comments, if you think I've missed anything would you do something differently because I'm always looking ways to improve things. I've also tried wherever possible as well not to do any crazy modifications um, to the van so it's just basically repurposing what was there and I can always put the the old battery box back if I decide it's not for me in the future and it just keeps everything away you wouldn't even know would you uh, once you get the um, cover down because it's all kind of behind the scenes in the van so there we go that's the lithium battery installed and working uh, in the Eldis CV20 camper van. Catch you on the next one where we'll take a look at the inverter. Bye!